It's back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Presented by the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant. Now, here's the entire Sooner Scoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, welcome back. What a uh, fitting orchestral dominant sound for uh, week one after the Sooners dominate FAU. Uh, just take it to Lane Kiffin and the boys. And uh, now we move on to UCLA, game week number two. Uh, we've already talked to Lincoln Riley. We've talked to uh, Mike Stoops, defensive players yesterday. Uh, and uh, we're starting to get a feel for this team. And it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of guys. Uh, welcome to the, po- the podcast, by the way. Josh McQuistian, Eddie Radosevich, uh, Bob Persbillo all joining us here today. A lot of uh, trying to tone down the the by Lincoln Riley the celebratory nature of that win and it's been kind of interesting talking to coaches this week not so much players but coaches because I think they really know that they're they've got a UCLA team coming in here that's not at full strength that's missing a lot of guys because of suspension so so Jamabo uh, not going to be playing their best running back uh, Asians are safe this week Asians everywhere will not will not be everywhere. Uh, Asian girls. Well, they might be in Norman. They're just going to be safe. Well, they might not be safe because he's not playing. If he, if he, oh, I see. If he's trails traveling. off on the, yeah. If he travels, and I can't imagine he's traveling. If he suspended. Are there I a lot of him. Asians at twenty four at uh, seven forty seven on a Friday night? Eh, not bad. They're probably not staying in Norman though. I don't know. I bet they stay Couldn't in Oklahoma City. Well, I mean, they go to school here. No, I mean UCLA, the team. Oh, I see what you're saying. I understand I that Asians the... do go to school at OU. I've been on campus. I've gone to school there. Josh, this week in the is Asian the, is community, this segment racist? is this racist? The Asian community had a lot of chalk, you know, meetings or you know, chalk billboards on the sidewalks. They still do that. Do do the teams not stay in Norman? I th- I just figured everybody stays at the embassy. Oklahoma these days. goes up to well, yeah, I think they most teams do stay at the embassy. I think I really don't know. But OU goes up to Oklahoma City. Somewhere. Yeah, that's so weird to me. I mean, I, it makes sense. And then bust but, back. Yeah, it makes sense. So anyway, whatever. But it, it's it's been weird because the coaches have been kind of muted in being able to say anything about UCLA because they really. I mean, Wilton Spate might be out. He's got a back injury. Uh, they played their backup quarterback. They've got a true freshman center that's starting for them. Uh, it's just a very wounded UCLA team. And also, it's Chip Kelly's first year, and he really doesn't have a whole lot of talent. And not to mention, it's just, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing, is they have suspensions and injuries, but at the same time, I don't know how good they would be with those guys. I mean, they look absolutely dreadful. Dorian Thompson Robinson. Bishop Gorman kid, right? Indeed. He was receiver when, when Tate was quarterback, and then he moved to quarterback. Okay, so he's the one that got he got in the fight. In the uh, quarterback show. The QB1 show? Yes. I'm eight episodes in. So it would have been like the second episode or the third second. episode when they're kind of setting the oh, stage. Oh, when they bring they have, them in, they say, you're my leaders, I yeah. need you guys to lead. Oh. And all isn't, that stuff. isn't that the kid? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he was the receiver, right? And then he played quarterback, so that makes sense. Yes. UCLA. I've, I've said it for a long time, though. I'm, it's, it's good to finally uh, have him come to Norman, but... Uh, if you want to go play for a mediocre football program, you go play for UCLA. And somebody that did choose to do that was Josh <laughs> Waraboko. And had to be one of the most bizarre he hasn't signing done day anything. ceremonies that you've ever been to. Bob and I were both there for yep. that at uh, Cassidy High School. That was that was nuts. that was up there with uh, one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever been a part of. And uh, his career has just never really taken off. You have Clay Bennett sitting in the bleachers, and you're picking UCLA. At Cassidy. It wasn't, was it not so much that he got booed as that there was just a big, like, it was oh, just a, like a like, groan almost? Yeah, It was just kind of like a, okay, man, why are you going to go play for a mediocre program? That's basically what Especially, uh, like, three or four days before that, he said, uh, home is where the heart is. When he put that tweet out, everyone assumed it was going to be the Sooners. So weird. It was bizarre. I remember when he showed up uh, in Baltimore for the Rivals Five Star and he came from the airport wearing a USC jersey. And, of course, the USC guys were just, Oh, my God, he's wearing it. He's going to USC. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's, well, the other thing was it was a Nike jersey. So 
like an Under Armour event, they like covered that shit up as fast as they could. Like, here, take our, take your gear and put it on and get rid of that Nike stuff. Nowadays, I would have just gone up to him and said, "Sir, I'm going to need that so I can burn Cause, it because we burn Nike things in my household." <laughs> That's just how it has to go down. Is that is this not such the biggest social media created bag of we're talking crap? About, for sure. We're talking about one of the dumbest collections of people. I'm going to burn across. my stuff. I'm going to burn stuff. I'm not going to give it to homeless people. I'm not going to throw it away. Just don't buy it. I'm going to burn it. For your whole method, wouldn't you give it to veterans? Well, that's what yeah. Scissor Hands has been saying. He's like, "Don't burn your stuff. There's homeless veterans out there." Give it to them. If you if this really is about our troops for you. So ridiculous. I don't want to even discuss yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. I, I hate giving the whole point even any time. Here's the thing, though. Uh, Nike's main audience that they're trying to sell to are all pretty much sympathetic to Colin Kaepernick. Oh, that's the thing. Like I Nike don't doesn't care about anybody, though. No, they're, they're, this is totally a marketing thing. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's People it's absolutely. <laughs> they get away. They, this is just this them is getting not political away with child for them. Labor. They, they, this is not political for them. This is them saying, "Hey, what makes us cool? You know, what makes kids want to buy our stuff? Oh, you know what? Siding with Colin Kaepernick, who every who is is considered to be uh, the evil." Uh, to every aging white conservative male that's out there. Nike uses child labor. Sweatshops. Everybody does, don't they? And when I found that out, I ordered three more pairs of Nikes. <laughs> I'll put it that way. For their hustle? Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't want to make a whole podcast about that. But UCLA loses 26-17 last week to Cincinnati, of all places. Jesus. It's Tommy. No, it's Luke Fickle. Luke Fickle's there. Yeah. I was going to say, it's Tommy Tupperville, the head coach up there still. I Might be the remember. best head coach currently coaching on game days in Ohio right now. Uh, he's kind of guilty by association. <laughs> we all, we he was them there all for together. a long time. Yeah, we Frank them all Solich together. is in, uh, what is it, Athens, Ohio? Is that where the University of Ohio is? Yeah. I think that's right. Yes, shout Athens. Out, shout out Tyler Tettleton. Frank Solich is just Gary Gibbs that didn't quit. A little bit. He might be a better coach than he's head better. coach. A better he's better than Gibbs. Well, he's he's an an Ohio, an analyst. You think if Gary Gibbs would have went to gotten into some action that he couldn't have had some winning teams? Action's not for everybody, Carrie. <laughs> but you I'm gotta you gotta have some like, grit. When Gibbs left, Gibbs went six and six, and like we were talking about the other day in that message, he got bombed out of what was it? What did we decide on the not the Sun Bowl? It was the oh the Gator Bowl. No, no, that's, that's the one no. they get that's the Gator a, That's Bowl. what they won. It was the Copper Bowl. Copper Bowl. Copper Bowl. That's, that's the one that when we, you were talking about, when Schnellenberger was in the press box watching the game and how weird that whole thing was. But, I mean, Solich got ran out for winning nine games, which at Nebraska, we, we've kind of come to find out that may be the ceiling. God, it's so sad. Nebraska, uh, they're playing. Who are they? They're Colorado. Colorado. Oh, yes. wow. What a matchup. The, yeah. I might watch that and just – have a tear stream down my face. <laughs> Pour one out for the big for the big eight. God, there were so many good Colorado Nebraska games back in the day. I distinctly remember uh, watching the was it two thousand and one Nebraska Colorado game. It was on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, when Colorado, Colorado destroyed just them, killed them, and then I think OU went out the next day and got beat by OSU. Rashawn Woods. Yes. Uh, yes. Set up. Was it that? Was, yeah, that was the year that it set up Nebraska going to the national championship game and getting bombed by Miami. And it should have been Colorado, and they went to the Fiesta Bowl instead. Nebraska's favored by four and a half. Miami was going to kill anybody that day. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I've got the wrong year. That was. Uh, no, you don't. Ohio, 2001. No, you're right. no, oh, no. Two was the, Ohio State. They you're got right. their right. butt whooped, and then they still ended up playing in the championship. Yep, you're right. You're right. That was that was one of those. There's like about every fifth year, there's some crazy like just series of events when a team that you're like, okay, they're they're done. Like LSU and what was it, 07. Yes. And then they end up winning the national championship. You know, like they, you know, you thought a, two weeks out they weren't even going to be in the thing. Thank God we now have crazy old coaches and former politicians running college football for us. So that can't ever happen. To so talk again. about body clocks and stuff of that nature. Don't get me started. Game control. <laughs> Game control. Don't hey, I was started. just watching a show. Michigan State's kicking off at 11 p.m. Se- uh, Eastern time. Yeah, in the, Arizona State playing so. in the desert. What against Herm? Yeah. And, oh, because it's an eight o'clock start there. Yeah. Yep. Well, nine o'clock. Do they right? have Are daylight? They two hours? Do they? Have day- they don't have they daylight. Don't have daylight. Day- they don't. 
because there's no Arizona is one of those it's all dust. Arizona is one of those states that you just never really know what time it is until you get there and you look <laughs> yep. down at your your phone. You it's wait like, okay, for yeah. iPhone to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry Barry Alvarez, somebody gonna have to keep him up. He ain't staying up for he's that. I think that he's DVR in that sucker. We got to uh, we talked a little bit about uh, UCLA, but uh, let's get to uh, some of the Lincoln Riley. From this week, and and what are the big things? Should we should we get what a god awful press conference oh that was? God. Should we get Josh's thoughts real quick on <laughs> Fort Atlanta? Not over that, Bob. For people out there, Bob was hurting on Monday. Bob stormed out of the press conference like I'd never seen him before, and everybody wondered like what what's going on with Bob? Like I, think I beat they Lincoln. Bob got divorced or something. I I beat Lincoln out because the officer holds the elevator for him. Really? And I, I didn't said, know that. do I need to take another one? Like no. You you can go. Yeah, he was over there schmoozing with uh, Joe C. So he he got hung up a little bit. But yeah, Bob was disgusted you can go, with the press. I'm going conference. downstairs to get a gun and come back up. <laughs> it it wouldn't have surprised me really. I would have just been like, "Hey, Bob, I pay you, okay? Don't shoot me." Who is Deshaun White? Deshaun. <laughs> Deshaun. God White, damn it, yeah. Dean. Who D Y T? Well, Delarian Turner yell. Yell, yell, yell Turner. Turner. Yell, 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 time. Turner <laughs> yell Turner. Turner yell sounds better. It's like Turner and Hooch. It was uh it was an interesting press conference. There's just so many people now. And they, I said this before, like we don't have Bob to scare the idiots away from asking stupid questions. That's true. Yep. Bob would, would intimidate you and force you to ask a good question or you wouldn't open your mouth. Or he cut you really, really short. Be done. When you guys first started interviewing Lincoln and realized how nice he was, like how how just overly respectful he is to your questions, did you ever imagine you'd be like, God, I miss Bob being kind of surly? I, I thought by year two, Lincoln would change his tone I, a I bit. I wonder if Lincoln will become a dick at some point, just because he's, I don't think it's in his nature, because he's just like, I, from the moment he got here, like he was holding 30-minute post practice yeah, press conference by far i mean you, you'd bring him in would bring answer in anyone's question all the players and the players would be gone lincoln's still talking he would answer anyone's question and he's kind of gotten away from that a little bit like but still that what was it 40 minutes of that press conference went? at least we should never and top a, and a 25. lot of it was crap that got asked after the game exactly that's what I get mad. I about. think we just need a moderate. We need like a Simon Cowell a moderate. type moderator. I'll stand up to there be like, moderate. I'm sorry, that question is stupid. Next, Here, here's what's funny. Eddie Eddie does a gr- Eddie does a great job because usually when he does that uh, funny question at the end, mm-hmm. that's his way of saying, "Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, Why done. are we still here?" I'm hit. I hit the gavel and say, "We're done here." Like. You like you did Saturday with the visor hat thing. That's well, that was oh, important. Okay, and I'm glad we let into important. this. I want to ask Eddie this. Did you like was that something you noticed on your own or was that something I I really thought I would be the only one tweeting about that because Tiffany was extremely interested during the game. Austin Brown, a guy that um that follows such me on a Twitter wife thing. threw it out there and I was like, "You know what? That is a good point. I didn't even realize that." And so then I just asked. That him. is such oh, a oh, white Harry, thing. It totally is to be they obsessed ta- with a hat. Well, they brought it up in the first half. I Sunburn. was over, I was at my mother in law's house. I'm watching the game and had already destroyed my poor computer. That's a whole separate thing. Um, and and I'm your watching camera the game, and they're like, too. "He's in a visor, and he doesn't, you know, like you can tell he's kind of losing his hair. Is is he gonna? Is he gonna burn? Did he put? Do you think he put suntan lotion on? I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like I, I, I've not even noticed what Lincoln. I'm not watching him at all. You know what the bagmen are going to call Lincoln if he does lose all of his hair? What head bald coach? <laughs> That's a dad joke. That I think say Eddie. That probably should have been mine. But by the way, happy out. birthday to uh, Lincoln Riley. He turns 35th. 35 years old today. 35th birthday. I'll be 35 in a in a couple months. By the way, Lincoln, let's just get that shit taken care of. I mean, you can get hair now. No, you got to own it. You, no, you don't want to get go. hair. He's thirty-five. Yeah. Not, he would look like an alien with bald head. I don't think that would work. I let's, think you got to own what this. you have, though. Like, I, like, I think big guys can pull off bald hair. I think it's tough yeah. for small guys. He's too skinny. Yep. Like, because you can be kind of like almost domineering looking. Like after a, the season, a little dude. After the season, Lincoln, let's go do it. I know some people, don't, some famous people. Don't do that. That have done it. You Brian Erlacher. Do Dusty can hook him up. Brian Erlacher looks 
crazy with hair. I could I didn't even recognize it. Because his whole life NFL. he hasn't had hair. Now he has it. That's I, why he shouldn't, you can't like you, shouldn't you, have you need hair. to do this before you lose it. Because once you lose it, then everybody's gonna get used to you being bald. But if no one ever gets used to you being bald, then it's not gonna be a, a, an issue. Lincoln, I beg you, don't do this. Do it. No George Costanza moment. No, no, please don't. Yeah, get get before you get the bell shit. I mean, God, this is another thing. No, I mean when he got when he got the rug. No, I don't. I was bald. No, no I, mean, I don't want any of that. <laughs> no, but I mean, he doesn't have to get like a you know he doesn't have to have like Eddie hair that's just everywhere when he doesn't get it cut. You need to get it cut. By the way, I want I really want Jason Kersey to grow out his hair because he has hair, and he says he looks like Wolverine when it grows out. It just grows out like from the sides. I really <laughs> want to see it like that. Like, I Jason, I know you're listening. I will pay you a hundred dollars after the season. Josh, stop it! Uh, I will pay you a hundred dollars to let Wolverine hair grow out. Sh- should we start a collection? No, I've got, I'm in for a hundred. It'll be a hundred. Hair's not that important. I don't think it is either. But if you're Lincoln, he's he obviously talks about it a lot. He jokes about it a lot. I mean, I think it bothers him. I mean, it- hair, hair is my one vanity. I, I like my hair. I don't really care about anything else. You have kind of thin hair, though. I have thin hair. I have a lot of it, but okay. it's thin. Okay. So, so you're not in danger. No, no. My my dad's still good to go. So I, I think, you know, my grandfather had hair pretty late on. So I, th- I think I'm going to be all right, at least for a while. Yep. Same same here. Dad, grandfather. I'm, I'm good. All right. Uh, Lincoln Riley, in his worthless press conference, <laughs> as Bob has termed it, uh, did address the injury situation, uh, and here's some of that. Uh, Injury-wise, real quick, uh, we expect to get Charleston Rambo back this week, you know, which that'll be a big positive. Uh, came out of the game pretty clean the other day. Uh, Austin Kendall, uh, you know, nothing too significant with his uh, with his lower uh, leg injury. Um, we'll we'll see how he's doing. You know, he's he's you know, there's nothing just immediate that's gonna just absolutely force him out for a long period of time. But at the same time, there was, you know, it was a, a pretty solid impact. And so, you know, there's, you know, mobility, swelling, all those things are going to be an issue. So, you know, we don't, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to play or not. Um, it's just going to really depend on how, you know, his leg responds to treatment and, and some of the rest that he's, you know, had already and will get early in this week. And then we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll start repping, you know, Tanner Schaefer and Tanner Mordecai, uh, having those two guys ready if Austin's not ready to go. And again, it's a little open-ended. We're going to see how he progresses and hope to have him back soon, but also got to have the other guys ready. Uh, everybody else injury wise was pretty clean. So expect to have the, the, the full group back with the addition of Rambo, uh, this week. So now he did skip over Delarian, uh, t- yell Turner. No. Turner, yeah. No, don't do it. D-Y-T. D-T-Y. D- God. It was D-Y-T in the press conference. That's why I'm angered. We shouldn't even f- say his name. He I doesn't can play. Say, I can say Delarian, though. Delarian or Delarian. I mean, that was a debate forever, just amongst us. But Josh, I think, settled it because he went out to see him. Well, Josh knows how to say it. Yeah. Well, I, again, Kerry, you're an 80s kid. Just think DeLorean, but just add a A where the O is. Yeah. DeLorean. Like that, that's, just, that's the way he has told me to say it. But Dean chose to call him DYT. Yeah, that's not even the correct order of those <laughs> things. That's not how any of this happened. Well, Lincoln was like, who, what? You should have to be able to name all 22 starters before you ask a question at Monday press conference. Well, here's God. the thing. Like, it's turned into a, a, a shout fest. Like, oh. people just trying to get an edge. And it's like... They spend all their time trying to wait till Lincoln Riley finishes his sentence so they can scream at him to ask the next question. That I think people, they just do that. They're just trying to get in, but then they get in. They don't know what they're saying. Yeah, what's your question? It's like, I think people forget their question because they waste all their energy trying to wait for Lincoln to stop talking so they can scream out his name. We should have a, we should have a press conference for people that actually cover the team on a daily basis and then have a has been press conference for the people that show, show up. up. So you're just being a young punk right now. No, okay, for the people that no, only show up true. Monday afternoon, and that's it. 
But that's what press conferences are, are really designed for. Then we should just for stop people that them. show up once a week. Them. Let's stop having them. Yeah, no, I'd let's stop not have it. I didn't learn anything Monday. But then you just have this group of people now that just come to the 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 post practice thing. They don't ask a damn question. They just record video and then put it up online. Just a bunch of leeches. This is the stuff that no one cares about except us. Yeah, unfortunately, but it's true. The beat is f***ed right now, people. <laughs> we need help. Please send help. All right. Eddie's already cussed twice. Uh, there's no other way that I can hide this. So I'm just going to get to it while we can. Let's get to our uh, pick three. Now it's time for the Choctaw Casino and Resorts pick three, where we find out what member of the Scoop crew really is the biggest degenerate gambler. It's the pick three from the Choctaw Casino and Resort. By the way, uh, if if you are a degenerate gambler and you need some help, uh, seek some of that help. Uh, I feel like I have to say that because it's. I listened to this this uh, intro. I was like, ah, the casino probably won't like that. Um, Nobody likes a quitter, though. <laughs> should you? Should we like Make change the intro to the second most? Because I think again, to to follow up last week, it's widely accepted. We had a good week. <laughs> hey. I did just as well Eddie as is, you did in this one. Eddie has told me some stories. No, I had a, I had a no, real good week. He put real money on. I, I put real money on real games, Bob. Eddie will be uh, one of those guys caught up in a sting one of these days. It'll be fine. I've always wanted to be part of a point-shaving scandal. <laughs> All right, we've chosen three games this week. Uh, one in the Big 12, one in the from a former Big 12 member, and then one out in the Pac-12, which nobody really gives a crap about. Uh, but let's start off with Mississippi State, Kansas State. Uh, that game on Saturday. It's in Manhattan, but Mississippi State is favored by nine and a half. I think Eddie has said that he's made this his lock of the week. I'm I'm toying I'm toying with the idea of making it my lock of the week. I think everybody's going to look at the Kansas State South Dakota State game last week and think Kansas State's just going to get railroaded this weekend. I'm on the opposite side of it. Kansas State turned the ball over four times on the uh, on the bad side of the field. Uh, they had 15 t- uh, penalties, which is very uncharacteristic for a uh, Bill Snyder team. I think they bounce back, and not only do they cover, but I think there's a chance that they uh, win straight up in Manhattan. You sound like you're running a tout service. Like, really? You, you just got like, it. railed through that All thing. All right, folks, let's talk right now. I'm going to kill your bookmaker. I'm going to rip his throat out. I will blow this man out. I will step on his throat until the man chokes. Let me tell you how. Winners, 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 winners. I'm on a roll. I think Thank you, you should, Stu. I think you should adopt a Stu Finer personality for this segment. We could. If you wanted it, we could. Uh, Bob, Bob, where are you going on this game? Let's move through this quickly. I don't want. To, I don't want this to take up the whole podcast. Kansas State wins the game straight up. Love Zuber, big play potential. He's he's gonna bring it. Damn it! I really thought I was gonna have something on this. I was like, I'm gonna go against the. Everybody's gonna be with Mississippi State here. I I, I don't know. Are we all Big Twelve homers? Because I'm with K State too. I like that matchup, and I just I, I think everyone the two games that both teams played, everyone's gonna overreact to. And I, I still think Kansas State's a dark horse team to make the Big 12 championship game. I think all of you are wrong. I'm going in the opposite direction because I've seen Kansas State play these. I mean, they do this every year. They go and they play. It happened with Auburn. Uh, it, it, you know, they, they came out early. I think North Dakota State beat them. And then they played Auburn tough. But they just play them tough. They don't really win these matchups. They don't have to win, They though. just play well. Nine and a half amount. Nine and a half. They don't have to win. Um. Okay, I'm with you guys. <laughs> Damn. Actually, Damn. I, was, Damn. I was thinking. I was thinking. Uh, yeah, they just have to be plus nine and a half. I was looking at this all wrong. Talking way too much. I don't think K State's going to win. I think they're going to make it close. So yeah, I'm with you guys. All right, moving on. Clemson and Texas A&M. Now this is a hate pick because I'm going with Clemson to cover easily. I just think Texas A&M is a sham. What? It, they said this, I think, during the OU game. Maybe it was Joe Klatt. That Texas A&M, he gave their record in conference in the Big 12 before, like the four years before they left. And their their record in the SEC, you know, since Johnny Manziel. They have a better record in the SEC. It's, it's almost identical. It's like a wash. Yeah. Like, he was saying, Texas A&M, they are what they are. They're that type of program. Everybody... Basically trumpeted them up because of the the Manziel years, but this is who A and M is. They're a very average program. 
that about covers it. I mean, I said this morning that if uh, Texas A&M went to Waco to play the Branch Davidians, I'd cheer for the Branch Davidians. They're so easily hateable. I but the number is kind of weird here. Is it twelve and a half? Is that what you said? Twelve and a half. Yes. It's at 13. So basically, I think it's come down from 13 and a half. Yeah, basically you're wanting Clemson to win by two touchdowns. It's going to be, I think I think that they get it done. I, I'll go Clemson, but I wouldn't be surprised if A&M covered. I mean, I, that 12 and a half, 13 and a half is a lot. I, I feel like uh, A&M, I mean, I feel like Clemson is going to have, have enough stops. So you're going A&M plus 12 and a half? No, I like Clemson. Okay. I want Clemson. I'm going Clemson. Too much defense. Aggies will have one hell of a show for recruiting until... 6 p.m. when they finally kick uh, kick it off and the Tigers show them who they are. Texas A&M made all their hay last week running the ball. They ran for almost, was it wasn't 500 yards? It was really close. Like it was something in that ballpark. Well, they park. played some no, let Josh finish. Louisiana or something. Northwestern let, State. Against easily the best defensive line in college football, that's not going to happen. I'll be surprised if A&M rushes for 150. I don't even think they'll, they may not hit 100. That I I would say Clemson will double that score, like thirty five ten, like it's going to be that ugly. Clemson is monstrous defensively. Kellen Mond, I, I thought Mond looked better than I expected, but he's not he's not ready for that defensive line. I mean, we, look at what they did to Jarrett Stidham last year, and I I just think A and M's defense is okay. They're not great, but they're going to just have to stay on the field all freaking night. And eventually they're going to wear down, and Clemson will put up some points. I am on fire! I am on fire! You know what a steam game is? That is a game that is hot, hot, hot on fire! All right, moving on to our final selection: Stanford against USC. That is uh, in Palo Alto. Stanford five and a half point favorite. Uh, I thought they were underwhelming in their opener. Bryce Love had a rough game. Didn't get off to a Heisman start. USC. Oh, they were okay. JT Daniels, you know, should still be in high school, reclassified. Uh, Bryce Young, what are you doing? He's going to be there for a long time. Yeah, but if JT Daniels is that good, his be there third years. year is when Bryce would be a redshirt freshman and then J- then Daniels would be gone. Stop making sense, Bob. Uh, I'm going to go with USC to, to cover the to, uh, plus five and a half. I'm with Kerry. I, I like the USC pick. I think Stanford, just watching the issues they had running the ball last week, I I don't know. That doesn't smell right to me. And I think JT Daniels could end up being a real star for SC. They may have their – already have their heir apparent to Sam Darnold. So I, I like what they have. I think they're, they're just a safer pick. Stanford, I don't know if what last week was just an aberration or if that offensive line – for the first time in a long time, really has some issues. Well, now I feel like Josh because I thought I'd be the only one to pick the Trojans. I don't like. I don't think Stanford is all that good. Nothing I saw last week makes me think they'll improve by leaps and bounds to be a top ten team the rest of the season. So I'm I'm going with the Trojans. Hmm, that puts me in a predicament. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Stanford. I I I don't know. I I don't know if I can trust USC yet. Obviously, we don't know a whole lot about them, but. Uh, freshman going on the road to play in a big game, which should have a lot of attention just within the uh, Pac-12, all 50 fans. Uh, I like Stanford to cover. Yeah, the home field doesn't really matter. It really doesn't thing. matter, but we'll just say playing different, different environment. Maybe it, At least 15,000 people are going to be screaming, Eddie. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, and half of them be stoned, so it'll be all right. It'll just, they'll just think they're screaming. They won't have any idea, actually. Well, last week it was a wash. This week is almost a wash. Bob, you pick these games. I'm not letting you pick games anymore. You pick games that we all agreed on. I didn't know we would. Except for Eddie. Uh, yeah, I guess that's hard to predict. And so, it's a, a lame week this week in terms of like the ranked teams going yeah. against each other. Georgia and, and South Carolina was the only other game where ranked teams are playing. By See, the way, I was totally wrong last week. I thought Florida Atlantic would cover. Um, what what he you, was covering in the, in the first quarter. <laughs> They covered in the first quarter because uh, it was 23 and a half. Josh, I, I don't even know if we've gotten your like overall thoughts just on the game from last week. I, I, you know, I did uh, for those that, you know, listen and aren't members. I did the, the player report card after the game and it was one of the highest scores I've ever given. I thought it was a really, really good performance. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, it's Florida Atlantic. That was a team that won 10 games last year. And a lot of people had a high expectations. Now, 
I think some things got covered up defensively. I mean, there were some throws there for Robinson that he didn't make. You know, there, there were some plays that could have happened. But by and large, I thought the defense looked really good. The front seven looked really clean. Um, you know, I, I, I know, know you guys talked about it. Obviously, Ronnie Perkins looks like he may be a star. I mean, just really a an elite guy. I thought Imani Bledsoe might have been the best player on the field. I thought he was dominant for huge parts of that first and second quarter. Uh, and Kenneth Mann, who has always been a guy I've loved, really, you know, was kind of quiet. I mean, so if you're getting that much quality play defensively and you really – don't even have probably your best pass rusher at defensive end really making an impact, that's a good start. So uh, offensively, I, they're better than I thought they would be. I mean, they're ahead of where – they they just look so in sync and it all looks so easy. And, you know, I like I said, I mean, the only thing I do want to say is Bobby Evans did start at left tackle. I didn't buy into the hype, wasn't buying Cody Ford, and yet again was correct. Okay, so last week <laughs> – uh, nice. <laughs> last week, I, I just want to say this: uh, Ed, we all picked Auburn to cover the two and a half. Uh, we were split on Michigan Notre Dame. Bob and uh, or Bob won on Notre Dame. Golden Domers. Uh, the rest of us took Michigan. Brian Kelly killed somebody. Just should be noted. Uh, he has. Uh, the rest of us took Michigan, so that was a loss. Uh, so now Bob two and zero. The rest of us one one. Uh, then. <laughs> Eddie took. Let's not talk about Tennessee. West Virginia to cover, which they did easily. Bob took Tennessee. Josh took West Virginia. I took Tennessee. So I actually finished one and two last week. So I'm the sacko, basically. Bob finished, uh, or Josh finished uh, two and one. Bob. Two and one. Two and one. And then Eddie, the degenerate amongst us, two and one. Am I the only one that heard Eddie say Brian Kelly killed someone and thought I, he meant it like as a sacrifice for the Michigan win? No, he killed a, a student. No, no, I know he did, guy. but like at first, I, that's where my head went. I was like, oh, okay, he sacrificed a human. That, Trust that me, it's seemed not the, plausible. It's not the first time I've heard Eddie accuse him. Or it's not, him an, it's him. not an accusation. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not an accusation. <laughs> he made a kid get up in a scissor lift and 35 mile per hour win. And it blew over, fell into mm. the street, and he died. This segment brought to you by the Choctaw Casino. Uh, look, it is an unbelievable place. Uh, they've got the the live. Uh, uh, they got dice. Uh, they got uh, they got balls. Now the roulette table. You can go. Uh, they had I think three different craps tables going the last time I was there, and they were full. So uh, craps is a lot of fun. By the way, if you've never played it, uh, they'll show you how to play. They take it really easy on you. Uh, and uh, it's a great time to play craps, uh, but a lot of great slot machines. The restaurants are unbelievable. Uh, you've got the the steakhouse over there. Uh, you've got the the cafes, the the buffets. Uh, they got Gillies, which is a really cool place to go. Uh, and then the district, uh, which is unbelievable. You got a full bowling alley, uh, an arcade, uh, a bar there called Tailgaters. It's really cool if you want to go watch the game. Uh, but it is an enormous casino, an enormous property. The pool is Vegas quality all the way. Uh, and the hotel rooms are as nice as any that I, I ever stay at. So uh, it's really affordable. It's a great way to get away in Durant. Uh, go book your rooms uh, for a weekend. Uh, take some buddies. Go with some other couples. Uh, great places to watch football games on the weekend. Poker rooms. Anything that you could want, they've got it. And uh, it's just... It's one of the coolest places I've ever been. It's in our state. If you're listening in the Dallas area, uh, it's a even a better getaway. I mean, it takes a couple hours to get there from Oklahoma City. It takes just over an hour to get there from from Dallas. I know my parents came up from Frisco. We hung out there during the weekend. Uh, my mom won a lot of money on the Big Bang Theory uh, slot machine, which I'm not going to give away any secrets, but I think there's a time of day that is particularly good for slot machine winning. We're doing well with Mighty uh, Mighty Cash. Is that a slot machine? Yeah. I'm not familiar with that one. They have a Tim McGraw slot machine. I thought that was weird. Why Mighty- does Tim McGraw have a slot machine? Because he's married to Faith Hill. If you should go to the Choctaw Casino and you're wondering if Josh is there, go to the roulette table. That's the only place I'll be. Really? You can just sit and play? Because I go to the roulette table and I just lose money. I, like, I can play roulette for hours. So like you're, you're hours. you know all like the little things where you straddle the lines and all that stuff. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. You can play. Can you win? 
Yeah, no, a, a long time ago, a buddy of mine, and uh, really, I mean, like, he came up with it. I, I was just kind of there and part of it. He came up, I mean, a system is way too, like, it makes it sound way more official than it is. Like, it's just kind of a style we play. And if you start out with a couple hundred bucks, usually you'll, I mean, I don't think I've ever just flat out not broken even, like, but I'll usually get ahead slowly. One night I got really into it was, I think we were up till four or five in the morning playing and then I got exceedingly drunk and gave away a good portion of what I'd done but I mean we you know we we were up pretty good for a while there so just like you said I like to play I I mean I, I am Wesley Snipes I always bet on black that that's a must but then I've got the numbers through the middle and usually I'll split the zeros and that kind of stuff so so it's true once you go what's black, that? you never go back exactly yeah I've I can say this as a guy who's probably spent, I don't know, a hundred hours playing roulette in his life. I've never ever bet on red, not once. Hmm. Not now the numbers. Ooh, yeah, I'll play red, the red numbers. But yep, that that's how I took it. But hate outside Asians. the numbers, I'm I, I'm all about the black. Or that'd be you hate Native Americans, wouldn't it? Uh, I actually am one, so I can now. say that it's safe. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> moving on, Lincoln Riley's <laughs> press conference was very weird, uh, as we've already talked about. Made even weirder by this. He's got you know unique ability, and some guys when they start to reverse field like that, you wouldn't be real happy with. But I mean, he's just kind of got the ability to to get around it. And had he not stumbled, he he might have taken it the whole way. And so uh, that was an interesting sound there. Um, and uh, so yeah, he. I kind of lost my train of thought a little bit. That was distracting. <laughs> uh, 90,000 doesn't do anything to me, but the cat sound over there got me. Um, so, but no, yeah, it, it does. It is demoralizing, you know. Cause okay, so I was on the other side of the room. Eddie, you were the closest one to it. I, could, I, I still Was it a ringtone? No, was it a phone? No, was, it was a phone. It was somebody's phone. And it was I, a ringtone, right? I have a yeah. theory. Oh, I think it was a text message. Okay. I have a theory on who it is, and it just... It kind of ruins it because he's such a nice guy that you think it was really Garen. Make, no, I think it was Michael Dean. I do too. I think it was yeah. Michael Dean. And I just you can't make fun of Michael Dean. So he's he's hashtag, Mr. Historian. Yeah, hashtag Pussygate is kind of over. That's it what I so weird. But I, I did. I Twitter. did. Michael Dean was the one who I kind of pointed my face. Michael Dean. For, I know this is inside. He runs like the the audio. He's board. the one that's always running the audio, like at the coaches show. And he's like the one who go gets to Rudy's, thanked at the beginning. He's there, but yeah, he's the one that says. Uh, this press conference is brought to you by Allstate. And, and he says, now here's your head coach, Lincoln Riley. That's that's Michael Dean. He's just the nicest guy of all time. He so just he, didn't he turn really his phone is. off. He just forgot to turn his phone off, which happens. I mean, it was it was weird, though. It was funny just out of, <laughs> how, out of nowhere it came. I literally thought, like, there was a cat outside the stadium. Like, if the stadium there, if there doors, like, cat, got up to the club level and maybe committed suicide. I would have gone outside and thrown it off the side. No, you wouldn't have. It would have survived. I mean, cats have nine lives, don't they? <laughs> they always land on their feet. Yeah, they do. I mean, cats jump off top of buildings and that survive. Been the first time you touch pussy in a while, Eddie. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> That's what somebody said on Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, yeah, you kind of played that nicely. <laughs> okay. So you get a shout out. Can we can we talk about earlier? Uh, Carrie's USC fan impression was basically the same as no you fan impression. So it's not. You, you guys are equal opportunity. What was my That's U.S.? Important. What did I say about you? Was it you at no, or was it West Coast? Like there was some. It was some fan base on the West Coast. I thought it was USC, but maybe I've got it backward. It was early in the show. Doesn't matter. Not important. See, but that's it struck the thing. Me and I meant to comment on it at the time. People always want to comment on what we say on the podcast, like as they're listening to it on the board. And I'm always like, I don't, I don't even remember talking about that. I just black out. We've we've discussed it before. Do you guys go back and listen? Never. Never. Josh I, does. I literally listen to everyone. That's the most psycho thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> By the way, how was it uh, not being a part of the post game podcast? Was that tough for you? I want you to know I haven't listened to it. I, I, I'm 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 so I'm, I'm physically drained. Like it hurts me that I was not part of it, and as such, I just I can't partake. I I, I put it out there in front of everybody. I'll retweet it. I want everybody else to hear it. But it's just. I feel like you, you know. You can like be I a part of it if you limb. want to be a part of it, Josh. You I, weren't there. <laughs> exa- see, this is Bobby. Lord, this shit over me. It's it's it's, I, I'll, it's all I hear. I'll comment. He's like, you weren't even in the press box, Josh. It has a tremendous open. 
Okay, well, I'll listen to the open. I don't know if I can get past that. Once you guys start talking, it's just going to hurt. It's just going to cut real deep. Come join, though. You know, yeah, that, right? you, I mean, yeah, you can be a part of it if you want to be a part of it. I, I'm in, I'm in real debate whether I have anything to add because, like, it's, I mean, I, the only time that I can, I was trying to think of this, like, a, if there was like recruiting news that happened during the game or something like that, or B, if something just bizarre happened during the broadcast, just stuff that you guys wouldn't be able to see or at least wouldn't have yeah. the full right to. I know they've got it in the press box and everything, but like, just. My ability to kind of, you know, be at home and have the, I guess, I hate, to, I don't want to put myself in that light, but, you know, like more of the fan perspective. I just do it more like, I just thought more like, you know, when we're at West Virginia uh, and we're doing that, all, we're pulling an all nighter and doing it at three in the morning, you probably don't want to be a part of that. There's a decent chance that's actually correct. And I, I will say my, what, I guess at that point, about 10-month-old, she'll appreciate that that belief because she will get pissy. See, I want you to hear the open. I, I'm disappointed you didn't listen to it because I think it's a, I think it's <laughs> oh, a good Oh, don't play open. it. I think he needs Nobody to hear it. Nobody wants to f***ing hear it. <laughs> God, Eddie. I can't lie, Carrie. This feels like a Carrie thing. Like, you're, I, you love an intro. You but, really love uh, an intro. It is really good. No, I no, did enjoy it. it now. Forget it. <laughs> I'm too busy bleeping out Eddie's F so we don't lose our sponsor. Uh, speaking of our sponsors, we have a member that has already bought a Lexus and um, signed up for a new mortgage. And then there's another one that just talked about on the board that Coop Ale has become his go-to. So Did somebody sponsors, really buy a welcome. Lexus? I have no. I, I got the impression it was uh, probably a joke, but I hope it wasn't. I hope Eskridge is getting crazy business. Let us know, Ed. Uh, all right. So, I think one thing that we need to talk about is uh, Kenneth Murray having zero tackles because that was a huge topic. It's the most overblown story of the week, in my opinion. And he's just crapping on everything today. Well, we should give is. Eddie like his hate story of the week. Like, it should be it's almost an its overblown own segment. story. How are you supposed to tackle somebody if the if the ball doesn't come to your way? Talked to, to with Teddy Lehman this morning about it. He said it's the most overblown thing that he's heard. Yeah, but I'm going to trust a guy that won the Buckus. But it's just weird. I mean, he should have had some tackles. I mean, Curtis Lofton played right next to him. He had two tackles that were called back. They were penalties. Well, I'm just saying, Curtis Bolton was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week playing right next to him. He made some tackles. Right. I mean, that's I just felt because Deshaun White had three or four, Bolton, Kelly, all in that same area came off of tackles. It was just weird. It just felt weird. How many... many Snaps did uh, Kenneth Murray actually play on Saturday? That would be a good question to answer. Well, I'll say this. I think he played some of that game with a concussion that they didn't really diagnose. Why do you say that? Because I think people hit. who were on the sidelines, yes, said that he was out of, it. out of it, that he was loopy. That looked like a stinger on that fourth down play. Well, he hit somebody. I mean, was it Gallimore that he hit his head, hit their legs? Like he know. got whipped, like he got kind of leg whipped in the leg whipped in the head. All right, well here I am talking to Mike Stoops uh, while Eddie, I'm sure, was looking down his nose at me for asking these questions. No, it had to be Mike, asked. Kenneth Murray play Saturday. Uh, he played okay. Uh, he could play uh, better, and uh, you know he uh, he didn't get a lot of action, but uh, there's a couple things he he could have done. Uh, but uh, you know he just got to keep keep moving moving forward and he's going to get a lot of opportunities this week and uh i think he's really focused at two good days this week so we we need him to to he can he can play better and he will play better this week i assume you, you'd like to see him have some tackles but defensive line played well maybe he would have had some some plays just better. weren't there there's a lot of guys running around there's a lot of perimeter plays i, I thought that's what you saw from when you really looked at the game the game was going east and west once they figured out it was going to be hard to run up inside, so the game became a you know a very lateral game. So it, it wasn't a, a real downhill game, but uh, uh, there's still some things. I, I, I feel like we got to be more physical in, in certain areas uh, uh, across the board, and in 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 particular the middle part of our defense. Uh, I want to get back to this uh, in just a second, but uh, first I have to tell you uh, one of our new sponsors. Uh, they've been a part of our website for a long time, SeatGeek. Uh, but football being back, SeatGeek, uh, it's the smartest, easiest way for you to get tickets to every game all season long. Look, whether you're looking for a last-minute deal, you're planning a night out, you need to find the perfect gift, gift 
Uh, SeatGeek, it's going to help you find the best seats at the best prices. It's fully guaranteed. There's nothing quite like being there in person. And SeatGeek will get you closer to the action uh, for a great value. Now, here's the deal. Uh, you want to go and download the SeatGeek app. And if you do that, I looked at tickets earlier today, UCLA. They're lower than $40. There's $37 tickets, $38 tickets on SeatGeek. If you go, you click on the tickets. It shows you what your field view would be like if you're in those seats. So that's a really cool feature. But if you go and download the app, uh, they have made it easier than ever uh, for you to get tickets. And we're going to give you $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. So if you download the app and enter promo code SCOOP, Today, S-C-O-O-P, uh, that's promo code SCOOP for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Uh, and by searching multiple ticket sites and, and, and grading every ticket based on value, SeatGeek is able to help you immediately find the best seats that fit your budget. And it's not just for OU games. It's, it's If you want to go to a concert, uh, they're great to use as well. I know I've, I go to a lot of concerts. I've used them to buy tickets for family. Uh, you know, for concerts in Dallas or uh, to sporting events in Stillwater and, and, and Norman. So uh, go check out SeatGeek, download that app, uh, enter the, the promo code SCOOP. Like I said, there's $37 tickets out there. You get a ticket for 17 bucks if you really wanted to go to the UCLA game Saturday. And by the way, it is kind of interesting, guys, that uh, there's all this talk about, you know, OU being on the verge of not being sellouts the first game. They were still selling tickets up to it. People are kind of, uh, I think, in some ways getting fed up with some of the donor fees that they're having to pay. Uh, and a lot of people know that because of places like SeatGeek, they can just go get tickets whenever they want to go. Absolutely. I I know that you know people in my own family tried to move their season tickets. Yeah, I remember that. You've been going through that whole thing. Literally tried to move their tickets three seats down. Same row, same section. Just move the seats, three seats down, 2000 bucks a seat. Extra. Extra. That's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Well, it's all about, you know, you build that south end zone. It's all about raising those donor fees. You want nice facilities, you're going to have to pay for them. Well, maybe they'll start making money back when they uh, get the kegs in the stadium. Josie was actually on record. Um, I saw that. Was that this morning? Uh, yeah, this morning. Barry Trammell. I was going to talk to him about it. Spent, they spent a good time together after the he press He was getting hot boxed by Dean Blevins, so I had to get going. Sounds like hell. Um, but, uh, no, Tram took the time and talked to him. Basically said they're talking about it, but nothing in the works yet. Whereas, I know a lot of people that know a lot of beer vendors, and they're saying it's happening. So If they don't include me in their promos for that, lost opportunity. I'll just put that out. They don't get Coop works in there. That's true. Lost opportunity again. Talk Boom. to us. I mean, we'll get you some bang, good beer bang. in there. Uh, okay, but back to the Kenneth Murray thing. You heard Mike Stoops there. He did say something that I thought I did buy into, which is, you know, Florida Atlantic came in, and they really attacked the edges. I mean, remember the plays when Parnell Motley was getting, uh, they were calling penalties on, on Florida Atlantic. Mm-hmm. I mean, they hurt themselves a lot with those penalties uh, by blocking from the side. So that was kind of what their game plan was, to attack the perimeters. They couldn't get Singletary on track to run the football. The defensive line was playing great. So there weren't as many opportunities. And, he, and Mike said it there, against UCLA, he's going to have more opportunities. So I kind of buy that part of it. Yeah, I do. I, I, just, I, I guess I'm not as alarmed as everybody else was that Kenneth Murray just was tearing up the stat book. I think people are just, he's the sophomore. He's been the leader of the defense all camp, name one of the captains. And he's the one that it looked like didn't produce. And it's like, he's the one doing all the talking, mm-hmm. but when's he going to start doing the production on it's the not field? A good look, my, my argument would be, well, did he not do his job? Like, maybe he did his job and everybody else was just getting tackles. Yeah, I don't or remember it, a lot of plays, Josh, guess, where like, you know, you probably, you've watched it and watched it back. I don't remember a lot of plays where... He just looked blatantly out of position, or that he just missed a tackle that he could have made. No, I, I thought he. I thought he had a pretty solid game. I mean, I. I think you have to understand they're in a great game. He's going to make a few more plays than he made. And I mean, and you know, I know people say, "Well, he didn't make any. He didn't make any tackles." That's not how this works. That's not. It, it's not solely about oh, did he have twenty-seven tackles? Because I mean, P, 
you know, people complained about Dominique Alexander for years, and he led them in tackles every season. It's not just about that. Like, I thought he did a great job taking on some of the blocks when, like Mike talked about, they were trying to work inside early on. And I thought it was kind of telling that Lincoln came out and was like, our defensive ends played really well. Our defensive tackles have, we, we've got to do a little work there. We've got to, you know, those guys need to play better. Who is going to be most directly impacted by the defensive tackles not eating up the blocks and doing the things they need to do? Yep. Kenneth Murray. So, like, that, I, I think there's some correlation there. And I think there was, you know, I don't know if it was a hidden message, but I think there's something to be read into that. The two plays I remember from Murray is the late hit, Robinson, the very first drive of yeah. the game. And, and he then, could have gotten a targeting call on Yes, it, he could have. And then when Gallimore knocked him loopy on that fourth on that fourth down play. I, yeah, I, I'm i with Eddie a lot in that I think it's a non-issue. We're going to find out a lot more now, as it, they go along. If we, if we go, you know, this week... And Iowa then State. Next week, Iowa yeah. State, and then especially Army, and he doesn't oh, do God. anything. He's got to lead the team you in gotta, tackles against Army. You push the panic button as soon as possible, but and you start game, talking about Deshaun White coming in. Now, I I do understand the the idea of you know he's not young anymore. He started fifteen games now at the University of Oklahoma. He I don't consider him a young player anymore. But it's kind of one of those things that happens. Like instead of focusing on how dominant the defensive line was, yeah, you just got to nitpick. You got to find. Gotta one find to I mean, there were there were people that you know were upset that some receivers got behind defensive backs. Oh no, and no. Chris Robinson just missed him. I, I take it back. The most overrated take of the whole entire weekend <laughs> is C D Lamb. He, he didn't even catch a ball. Drake Stoops caught a ball before C D Lamb. I think that's probably the. Lamb and one. Lamb and Grant Calcaterra just you know just like was was not there today. You've my, waited you've waited two years for this defense to play well, and they finally did. And you find things to bitch about. My personal <laughs> favorite uh, are all the people on the board that just pretend like Mike Stoops isn't even the coach. Oh yeah, and all they talk about is Bob how Diaco. Uh, as how great a job Bob Diaco did this weekend. And that's fine. That's going to happen all year. I mean, I've already kind of prepared myself for it. <laughs> Uh, okay. It was it was the most I said it on the post game show, Josh. That was the most dominant opening performance from an OU team that I can remember in a while, and it's even more, I guess, impressive in a way because of all the leadership, core leadership that they lost off last year's team. For them to come out and be that dominant against you know a team that I don't know if they're going to necessarily be a a ten win team. I certainly think they're going to win seven, eight, possibly nine games this year. They'll compete in their conference for, for the sure. champion. I mean, there, there's sure. no question. That's a that's a that's not a great football team, but that's a good opening win. I mean, it's like we always talk about. You know, when people ask me about, well, what's his competition like? Well, it's not. You know, when we talk about recruits, well, it's not great, but he dominates accordingly. Oklahoma could have scored a hundred. I mean, that and and the defense was what, with the exception of that first drive, was in complete control of that game. So uh, you have to really like where OU was. Really, that whole thing. To me, the only thing keeping me from getting pretty excited about what we saw defensively was I remember Ohio State last year thinking, okay, Oklahoma's yeah. finally gotten this figured out defensively. They're they're better. This is a good group. They looked good against a really good opponent. They're ready to go. And then, you know, we know what transpired the rest of the year. So they're going to have to build a body of work. But, jo I mean, to me, that defensive performance – was maybe not the same as that Ohio State, but it's in in that conversation because Florida Atlantic is that dynamic offensively. Get to the fridge. Grab yourself a native amber, an F5 IPA, or any of the great Coop Ale Works beers because it's time to make a toast to this week's player to watch. It's time for the Coupel Works uh, player to watch. Uh, we each go around the uh, round table and talk about the player that uh, we're most intrigued to see uh, this week against UCLA. We've talked a little bit about Kenneth Murray. I don't know if anybody's going to include him on the list uh, to see how he bounces back from his no-tackle performance. By the way, Eddie, I have uh, stocked the fridge uh, for this weekend. Nice. I think we're going to try it. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I got it so we could try it specifically on the post game. But I've heard a lot about the DNR. Mm -hmm. It's like ten percent alcohol. I think I've had it once. Like not. It's a very bold beer. Apparently, we'll try it. We shall try it Saturday. It sounds like it's right up my. It sounds like it's 
more up my alley than the F5 IPA is. Okay. Which is your favorite. Yeah. I'm down. So, yeah, we're, we're testing the waters on the DNR. Got a little bit later kickoff, one hour late, later, so. I had the, uh, good. I did have the uh, spare rib the other day. It's good. Very hoppy. Hoppy? I think I'd like that. I like the hoppy It is. Beers. It's a little bit more like the, F5, like the F5 IPA, F5? yeah. I like that. The, it's called a pale ale, but uh, it is strong. Okay. I think I gave you one of those, did I not? No, I had I had two F five. I had a couple F fives. I got four sitting the in the game. fridge. I'll sit home with you. Okay. Oh, like sent home with me. Yeah. Actually sent home. I don't know. Can't remember. Anyway. Uh. Okay. It's time for uh our our players to watch, uh coming up this weekend against UCLA. Um, Bob, let's start with you. I'm gonna go with Kenneth Mann. Just uh, someone that is learning to adjust to being an every-down player. He didn't play bad Saturday. He had three uh, three tackles. But this is the game where I think he gets his first sack of the season, and you start seeing that consistent element to what he's going to bring to defensive line, game in, game out, and they're going to need that. We all know defensive line has to be better in order for this team to make a real run in 2018, and I think that all starts with, with uh, Kenneth Mann. Josh, you went with Buki last weekend. I don't know what your thoughts were overall, uh, but who are you going with this week? For me, I, I'm going to go with Neville Gallimore. I, I think it's time. I, I, I really, I think I came into that game. I finally bought in. Okay, he's ready to make that step. And then it was just okay for Oklahoma up the middle. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. And I certainly didn't see him flash a lot, other than you know what Bob mentioned earlier, taking out Kenneth Murray. So. It's time for that light to come on, or we all just have to face he's not going to be the guy that maybe his talent says he can be. Because at some point, you it can't be about hype anymore. You've got to become a guy. And it's right there for the taking, because Oklahoma has guys around him that are making plays. Now he's got to step up and be that guy. And this is a perfect situation against a run-heavy offense that is going to you know, lean even heavier on that run game with their their starting quarterback, who's their most capable thrower, probably out. Is it safe to say that everyone was kind of a little disappointed with Buki just because he had been built up to be like Roy Williams circa 2001? I mean, I thought he like played, he was gonna he played pretty like well. He was gonna get like three interceptions and lead the team in tackles. And, oh, I I said it during the post game show if. If he would have intercepted the ball, because he he made a good break on the ball. Uh -huh. If he would have intercepted it, that's a pick six. Yeah, he would have. Every yeah. man in that entire stadium goes fully erect. How many bookies would have been born nine months later? Oh, my God, 20. <laughs> I think that's a fair number. It's just hard to judge the defense because so many of those guys played half a game, too. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing is, I mean, how much do we really know about this team? I think everybody's ready to crown them, and rightfully so. They looked really good. I thought they played really good. But, I mean, for the most part, Oh, you played a quarter on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a quarter and a half. Quarter and a half, yeah. But, I mean, in that quarter, and, I, again, I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying, Eddie. I mean, it's an open book. Oh, there's a lot but to But that's lie. as Don't dominant a quarter as I've seen OU play in a long time. Yeah, just as I said. I mean, it was probably the most dominating opener since I've been on the beat, and that's, you know, I guess since 2010, so eight, eight seasons. Mm -hmm. For sure. When you think about it, the years that OU went to the national championship, I mean, like their opener at Tulsa was rough. Yeah, uh, I think the, one year that they like thirty four to three or something like that. Like one 41 year, three. It was it was at half. I think thirty eight three was the final. Something it was like, like that, yeah. three nothing Tulsa at half. It was kind of nasty year. outside though, raining. Uh, I remember UAB one year UTEP in two thousand. Oh, they UTEP. opened up with and it wasn't a great oh, UTEP opener. in twenty ten. Was it 2010 or 20? Oh, that was a terrible 2009? Opener. That yeah. was a bad opener. That was Trey McTwire, freshman, true freshman. Yeah. Was it the 2005-2006 Tulsa game when Adrian basically had to save them late in that game with that long touchdown run to kind yeah. of put Tulsa away? I mean, it's been rough. I mean, and you look... I think that was the 9-11 makeup game, was it not? Is that what it was? Because I know the year before was the, the no, TCU I think you might game be right. at home. I think you might be right. So it, it was something like that. Anyway, Everybody, everybody's probably shook, wondering what was happening with Tower Seven, but that's neither here nor there. Eddie, uh, your player to watch. I really want to go CD Lamb, but I think I'm going to go Parnell Motley. I think he gets. Yeah, that's a good. I one. think he gets an interception this week. Don't be surprised if he gets two. How about that? How's that Ooh, for a hot sports opinion? Hot takes. That's a hot take. He he got his hands on one as well on Saturday. Just couldn't get it. Did you guys talk a lot about? 
Trey Brown probably was OU's best corner on Saturday. We we spent a lot of time. Yes. On we, Holy crap! We went he good. full fanboys. You gotta remember who Brown. you're talking to. The people that watch <laughs> Trey Brown the most. Yes, we talked about how well Trey. He was played. incredible though. Josh Destroyed those screens. Yeah, I was a little. Was, I mean, and even like you know, you kind of expect him to excel in that area because he's just a bigger guy than Norwood. But then watching him work vertical and stuff, I mean, he was just, he was outstanding. Anyway, I don't want to rehash. Any, any chance that he ends up starting in front of Norwood? I mean, are we comfortable to say that that's a full thing? No. No? There's nothing to suggest that Norwood didn't play well. Yeah. Exactly. It's just Brown played. And Norwood had a great break on well, that you know one. What the, yes. the best part about this is, is we're talking about a bunch of guys on defense that actually are contributing that aren't starters. And I think that's that's... That might be the biggest thing that I took away from Saturday was the fact that they, it would seem, they have really, really good depth. Exactly. We're talking about replacing Norwood, who had a solid game. He didn't do anything wrong. It was just Brown was that good. You need that to get to those guys to stay that way the entire way, not get discouraged if they're not going to start. That's what I'm sort of watching. It's one thing to play well first couple games, but if you're still not starting – do you start to get a little antsy and a little discouraged? I'm breaking the mold. I'm going with two guys, one on offense, one on defense. He's cheating. I'm Top cheating. out. Cheating. Well, number one, I'm a, my number one guy is Ronnie Perkins. I want to see him play more. I just want more of Ronnie Perkins. I mean, he was, he was uh, relentless, which I think we haven't seen from a guy on the defensive line that young in a very, very long time. He was, he was fun to watch, and... Uh, the other guy, Drake Stoops. I want to see more Drake Stoops. I can't get enough Drake Stoops. The Drake. Does Perkins start now that Gums is out and they're still kind of figuring things out with Mark with uh, Mark Jackson? Uh, uh, Mark that Jackson? is a great question. Uh, and I talked to Mike Stoops about that. And I want to get to that. But first, uh, let me remind you guys, uh, this segment was sponsored by uh, Coop L Works. Uh, they have been... Uh, brewing beer in Oklahoma for nine years now. They've got seven year-round beers and four seasonals. The Oktoberfest is out now. Make sure that you guys stock up your tailgate with some of Coop's uh, F5 IPA or the Horny Toad Blonde, which is my personal favorite, uh, before the game this weekend. Uh, as we talked about a lot pretty soon, October's coming around. They're going to be able to go get that refrigerated in your, in your, your nearest liquor store. Uh, but yeah, everybody I run across... Like here's oh you guys I heard Coop Coop Ale works on your your podcast I love their stuff like their beer is another level of good it's made here it's fresh it's it's you know it, I don't want to I don't really have the vocabulary to describe it all uh, but it's different it's I enjoy different drinking, drinking. It. yeah it's a different drinking beer drinking experience so and it's really good stuff so go to your liquor store uh, pick it up Coop Ale works it's usually all there together. Whether you like wheat or ales or pilsners or um, you know ambers, they they've got they've got you covered. I love the native amber, Oktoberfest, the horny toad, uh, blonde. Eddie's more the IPA guy. Uh, he probably is going to like the DNR that we're going to try in the post game. Uh, all right, Bob, back to your your comment. I asked Mike Stoops about what they do now with Addison Gums. Mike, you get you get kind of blindsided with the Addison news going into the game last week. Does this week allow you maybe to give some more guys reps to, to I don't know, um, toy with things a little bit over there more than maybe you could last week? Well, it, it makes us think about you know what you know. You, there's only so many moves you can make, and and if you take a player from this group, what does it do to that group? What does that next player in line in that group? What's he look like? So you're you're trying to average in. Um, succession plans and, and where it benefits you the most, and you rob this guy to pay this guy. There's what is it? What is that analogy? You rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a yeah. little bit of. It's not quite the uh, the mice story, but it's it's similar, <laughs> you know. So I, mean, I don't want to be a prophet or anything or uh, tell stories here. Tell fables. Oh, is that what a fable? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. So that was a shot at Tom Herman. The my story was it not a, a shot at Tom Herman? For sure, definitely. Eddie, do you have a ruling on that? I think it was. I think it was a little shot, a little jab, maybe. Tom Herman, by the way, said that his uh, football team. If you hadn't heard, 
We've been living under a rock. Tom Herman basically compared his team, was it Lenny? Yeah, to a mentally challenged character who got loved, shot in the back of the head. See, and the I can't remember because I think in the in the book it was rabbits, but I think in the movie it was dogs, like puppies. Right, it was. Uh, is that how it was? Yeah. So like Lenny loved rabbits so much, he he hugged them so hard that he killed them. And Tom Herman was saying that that's what his kind of like Tommy to Boy with a sail, Tommy Callahan. <laughs> Uh, he just wanted the shrimp cocktail. He just wanted to make a cell so bad. He loved it and petted it and then stroked it. And then I, and then, yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, I took out of that answer other than it was a shot at Tom Herman. Kind of like, I don't think they're really going to make any drastic changes. Yeah. Everybody keeps trying to push this, like. Move Caleb Kelly back to outside linebacker. Or, or move make, Ryan like, these, Jones. Or these move, rash decisions. I just don't think I that they're ready said, to do that. I kind of said move, uh, maybe maybe look at... I mean, it. Judge, do you think Mark Jackson played well? Did he play okay on Saturday? I didn't notice him a lot. I didn't think it was bad. I, I should say I, I'm going to actually do kind of the, the Monday morning <laughs> on Wednesday uh, quasi thing just because Labor Day screwed everything up. Um, but yeah, I, I liked him. I thought he had a solid game. To me, one of the more interesting ideas is, you know, Oklahoma's talked about being multiple up front. Well, do you want to run some, run a little more four down and you can get Perkins and Bledsoe and Mann all in the field at the same time and that kind of negates your problem at Jack. You don't have to worry about that as much. Or you can I, go, you know, Fa Matue or uh, Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, like you can go Gallimore some different ways the same time. with it. I, and it, it plays up your defensive line depth, and it, and it negates the fact that you don't really have a pass rushing linebacker right now. Give, give me Ronnie Perkins and Kenneth Mann on the field at the same time. Always. Absolutely, yes. you can make that work. Yeah, I mean Ronnie Perkins. That was from a defensive tackle or defensive end, whatever defensive lineman. That was about Three as technique. impressive as a freshman performance that I can remember. I mean, obviously, I'm sure Tommy Harris was up there at some point, but I mean, I thought that was. That Tommy Harris's first play playing, I don't know, probably playing at the one. His first play from scrimmage, he was in the backfield tackling the running back eight yards really? behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That would have been like North Carolina? Yes, it yeah. was the uh, okay. Hispanic uh, Foundation game or something like that. It was the one we were talking about a few weeks ago that was wildly racist because I went home with like 12 sombreros from the student section. <laughs> a bunch of bricks. Yeah, there were sombreros <laughs> all over the place. They were everywhere. They're, I think I still even have maybe one or two in my closet. Like I, I think I've have, traveled with me. That may have killed the Hispanic Foundation game that day when they realized, yeah, this we can't control the racism <laughs> surrounding this game. People think that uh, but no, people are bringing pinatas like, like, in the student section. People taking donations to build a wall in the student section. Oh my god! Oh wow! Uh, I thought Perkins probably going back to Tommy. That was the most I've noticed a freshman defensive lineman that you know in, in his first game in his debut. It's amazing what happens when you recruit guys when you recruit well and you recruit guys that can come in and actually play immediately. Don't say absolutely, that. but Eddie, we saw him live a couple of times. I mean, I think you know you. I know I know Kerry was there with us in St. Louis, but you and I also saw him up in Indianapolis. I knew he was good. I didn't think he was going to look that good. Right. No, he he definitely had a really good, obviously a really good summer to put himself into position. And I, you know what, Josh, I think it helped that he was here early and just got those. I mean, look at all the guys that did play on Saturday. Uh, they, it seemed like for the most part, outside of like a Drake Stoops or somebody, they were all here during the spring and were able to participate in things. Yeah, how crazy is it that the one guy that didn't show up early that played early was a walk on? Yeah. I mean, well, he, or, you know, that played a lot. He yeah, obviously I guess played has, a real role. Drake has some talent. I mean, I, I don't think that there's anybody that saw him play over the last four se or three seasons at Norman North didn't think that he had some talent. I, you know, I, what I, I tell you what did surprise me was Jalen Robinson and how much That's he who I was going to say. He was in that very first drive. He's in when Rodney scores that touchdown. When all we but, really talked about was Jaqueline Crawford. Maybe it shouldn't. I mean, you guys, you know, we, and I know Bob knows it too. That was Lincoln's first offer as head coach. Good call. He I did not in, know that. Yeah, he because didn't realize that Jalen was co uh, committed to Tech and it didn't feel like OU was ever going to make that oh, yeah, offer. That's right, yeah, and then boom, a couple days later, gets the OU offer. Dominoes fall quickly after. One guy we haven't talked about. We we should before we get out of here, uh, and we got to talk some recruiting too, but. Uh, 
Curtis Bolton, Big Twelve Defensive Player of the Week. I'll tell you what, I it was it was short last week, and I was I was halfway there. I have a full on man crush. I'll I'll tell you why too, because uh, Mike Stoops after the game, it was kind of interesting. He uh, started laughing when I asked him about Curtis Lofton. He said he was an interesting guy. Bolton, or what did I say? Lofton. Curtis Lofton. I just saw Curtis. Another Lofton great. Last another week. great. Oh, you linebacker! I just saw Curtis trying to last get to the level of Curtis. Been Lofton. on my mind, yeah. Um, so Curtis Bolton, yeah, I asked him about Curtis Bolton, and he he laughed and said he was a really interesting guy. Uh, and uh, he was asked about him again. He kind of snickered before he started talking about him yesterday after practice. Curtis played outstanding. Thought even Caleb, uh, both the uh, the well linebackers played well. But Curtis, you know, made some plays. That's what he does. He he runs around and he plays with with great effort. Uh, and uh, He's made himself a, a better player uh, here of late, and uh, you know we need him to continue to progress, and, and and he can really help us if he can continue that climb. And see, to me, Mike has always been known as a guy that like you can get in his doghouse, you can get on his bad side, and he just gives up on you. Like I think, and, and for him to kind of laugh about a guy like Curtis Bolton, you're like. This has got to be a really interesting dynamic between these two because I would imagine that there was a period of time where Curtis Bolt was a real shithead and Mike had pretty much given up on him. Uh, but something has happened and now they really get along. And so I just, I Curtis Bolton was meeting with the media yesterday and I just kind of had a, I think, interesting conversation with them. It's a heart to heart almost. About what the dynamic was of their relationship. Curtis, I think um, you, Mike Stoops was asked about you today. He kind of chuckled, and after the game on Saturday, he called you an interesting guy, and he laughed really loud when he started talking about you. What's your relationship like with him? Um, me and Coach Stoops, uh, it, it is an interesting relationship. Um, in my younger years, I, I needed a lot of time to mature, and, uh, and I needed a lot of time to build my consistency. And, um, and and I think uh, a lot of t- a lot of times in my younger years he was frustrated because I felt like he could see he could see what I could become, but I wasn't becoming all that I could be, and that's that that was something I needed to grow up and and, and realize, and that's that's kind of been my main focus in the last two years, and I think over the the, the last few years uh, we built it up. I think he uh, he understands where I'm at as a person. Um, I'm trying to understand where he at because. <laughs> You know he's crazy. You always see him jumping around, wiggling, uh, uh, kind of freaking out all the time. But it's it, it's tough being a D coordinator. Um, you got to think about all eleven positions on the field. And and if I can, uh, and I'm just trying to play sound football. So at the end of the day, he knows that if there's one position he can count on, it's the will linebacker. Is that is that a situation where you're now maybe you're you're trying to impress him or you're trying to I don't know, make him happy? I mean, whereas um, you just saw him as a guy that was always on your case in the past. Not so much. Uh, I'm not. I'm not out here trying to impress him. Um, he he puts the game plan out. That that that's our leader. That's our captain. You know, that's our general. It's my role as a soldier to go out there and, and implement that game plan to the best of my ability. Um, I don't think it's so much of a me trying to trying to prove myself to Coach Mike. I think Coach Mike has understood for a long time. I think. Um, I think uh, Coach Mike just wants the best out of his players. And he's really adamant about it, and sometimes, uh, and sometimes I didn't see it like that. But again, that's that's where our coaching staff does a really good job of sitting you down outside of football, and that, that's why I say our coaching staff so good. It's not just the it's not the game plans; it's it's the how they care for you as a person, they care for you as a man. Um, that's where they do a good job of sitting us down to make sure we're on the same page, so we're not. So we're not. It's not. There's not unnecessary tension, if that makes sense. So there's a. There's more of a positive relationship there now than. Yeah. In the past. Um, you know, in, in, in our younger years, we had we had some issues, and that, and that, and like I said, I fall back on. That's where I I did a bad job, of of maturing up. I was young, um, didn't handle everything. I would shut down. I would get pissed off, and and that's where. That's where I went wrong, and that's where that's like I said, that's where our coaching staff did a good job throughout the years, just just um, making sure I was in the right state of mind. Even though I wasn't a guy that was playing a lot, um, they always made me feel a part of things. They always made me feel like I could get better, and um, I've always had a shot. So, um, and and basically, when I got my shot and I could make the best of it, uh, that's what happened. I it definitely sounds like two guys that have really been through a roller coaster of a relationship together. That sounds like a carbon copy of. Oboe. Yeah. You know? It really And what's does. funny is, like, 
those guys defend Mike, you know, with their lives. Like crazy now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a certain level of like you have to get through that initiation process. Initiation or barrier or whatever you want to call it that like Mike, he breaks you down at some point and you either accept it. Or you, you don't fall become out. a good player, or you fall out. Yeah, and if you probably do, a lot like the military, probably like going through uh, like boot camp, boot camp or yeah. something. And you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that you know, obviously, they can't stand Mike Stoops, but I think there there's something to be said for the way that those guys do talk about him and do, I, I guess, appreciate him would be the right word uh, as far as just the way that they do care about him. And I I think that you know, in the end, that's going to lead to OU having a what I think could be a pretty damn good defense. You know, we might be saying this in a couple years about Levi Draper. It feels like he might be going through that exact same thing with with Mike. Yeah, I mean, and Tim is his position coach, but you know, Mike kind of he can be overbearing, and you know, or I don't know, overbearing right but he oversees pretty much everything. So, but yeah, we've seen. I mean, like I think PJ and Bonasor was a guy that was a perfect example. He like just sucked though. He he wasn't doing the things that needed to be done on the field. Because I remember one day, like you could tell Mike had given up on that kid. Like they let us in early, and they were doing like punishments at the end of the practice. And Mike was saying some awful things to the kid, and I was like, wow, <laughs> like no wonder they don't let us into practice anymore. Uh, but you could tell, like Mike. Was and, and you could tell that Mike one had had enough and two, and Bonasor was a little shit and wasn't ever gonna, wasn't ever gonna fit. I mean, there's a lot of guys that just don't fit. I mean, like, but like Buki is a guy. He has that mentality. He wants to be coached hard. He understands how to be coached hard, and that, you know that happens. Seems like he embraces it. Yeah, he that's wants what, to get better. That's what they said about Parkins. That's exactly what. Thibodeau was saying throughout camp. He's tough-minded. He wants to go through all this. Different mentality. And I'm sure, you know, Roy Williams, you know, we talked about him. I mean, he was a guy that struggled with maturity. And really is, I mean, like he said, Bolton said many times, it was about his maturity level. Yeah. Same thing with Oboe. You know, it's interesting. I Looking back on it now, I wish somebody would have, or we would have asked him when that light, kind of turned on for him because I guess it gets to a point in a guy's career where you either have to do it now or you, you're you never going to do it and you know you basically have wasted the last three four kind years of Kind of like Khalil Houghton senior year. Yeah, Light turns bit. on. A little bit. We'll have another chance. We'll have Bolton. He's the best interview on the oh, team yeah. right now. There's no doubt we'll dig a little bit more. You know what else is interesting about that too from Mike's perspective is he is always careful to include Caleb Kelly in any conversation. Like, I asked him about Bolton. He brought up Caleb Kelly. Like, he's not giving up on Caleb Kelly. And well, I, he I wants both of them to play and be productive. Yeah, I don't think that anybody's necessarily given up on Caleb Kelly. I, I do think that... I mean, I was I was shocked that Bolton ended up starting over him. I spent the last month and a half saying that there was no no way that they were going to let that happen. And then he finally did. And you Best know, players play? I I think it has more to do with Curtis Bolton being a pretty damn good linebacker than does what Caleb Kelly's not doing. Don't you think, Josh? Well, I was fixing to say, (laughs) perfect timing, Eddie. How much do you have to give it up to Curtis Bolton? Like, he bet against everyone. Like, I mean, and and this is a – guys, would you be – do you think it's fair to say that this felt a lot like, well, Kyler Murray and Austin Kendall's a competition? We all just assumed Caleb Kelly would start. No matter what was said, no matter what was put out there – and on top of that, he could have he could have been a grad transfer. He could have just gone somewhere else. Yeah. And so it was even easier for him to do whatever he wanted to do, but he stayed in, stuck it out, and now he's the starter and had a great game to start his, you know, his, his first uh, year as a starter. So I mean, it it says a lot for him that he didn't take the much easier way out that I don't think anybody would have blamed him for. By the way, you mentioned uh, being a graduate transfer. Um, the National Football Foundation released a list earlier today, uh, and I know we're going to ask Lincoln Riley about this. Uh, of all the kids playing uh, football right now that are that are college graduates and working towards advanced degrees, Oklahoma had seven guys on that list: Jonathan Alvarez, Rodney Anderson, Nick Basquin, Alex Dalton, Carson Meyer, Drew Samia, and uh, Austin Seibert. 
So that's pretty cool. So you got four from the 2014 class and three from 2015. Okay, so do I keep saying that? No, I'm wrong. I thought I had read that Bolton was Kate, uh, he was a graduate. Am I wrong about that? No, no, no. He is. He's going for a second degree or a, an advanced degree. He already graduated. Okay. No, no. Okay. I thought Kerry left him off the list. I thought I missed his name. Yeah, he's so not like, on okay. this list. Oh, he's not? Okay. No. Huh. So I'm not sure. I mean, I... Okay, so I, I guess I might have had that wrong. I kept... I could have sworn Curtis I Curtis al- already talked about graduating. He okay. talked about that last week. Hmm. Well, interesting. interesting. Maybe the National Football Foundation is wrong. Maybe he's not going for another degree. <laughs> no, you have to go to school. You have to take <laughs> classes. Even if you graduate, they don't just let you be like, I don't need to go to school anymore. I'm already done. Still my favorite quote ever. Jeff Bidet was like, I'm taking whatever's easiest. Like, just like, <laughs> I'm, not, was awesome. I'm not here for my grad. <laughs> Speaking of, Jeff Bidet made a roster. Did he really? I didn't even know that. The Vikings? The practice squad for the Vikings? Okay, it was a practice squad. Yeah. Okay, okay, I got that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know Bob is here to rain one? on your parade. Damn it, Bob. I wasn't there, was I, Bob? <laughs> you know who didn't make a roster? Devonta Lampkin. A lot of people Strong. got cut on that Saturday. Like Flowers, Parker. Blake Bell got cut. Blake. I saw that. Also, I was Dimitri a little Flowers surprised that Flowers hasn't yep. What's caught that? on some. I was surprised that he hasn't caught back on with somebody. I just the fullback position might be a little dead. I just need Kajus to to sign with somebody. F- him. What? How do wow. you hate? How do you hate Kajus? I don't watch the show, but I hear all good things about the dude. Oh, is, it, is it the hippie stuff, Eddie? You just hate? Are you no, like? Are just, you like? Yeah, you don't like the stones. No, I just. I can. I, I, I mean, tend I can to, see everybody that would... likes him. I tend to stray the other way. I don't care for him. He's obviously not great. I mean, he was the four string tight end. Well, he's a he's a wide receiver trying to play tight yeah. end. And he can't I mean, block. Just I don't know. He made plays though. He did make plays. That I was just shows that, you how good Baker is. Like Baker made him look like a guy that should be playing. I was surprised in the that NFL. they released Devin Orchard. Yeah. Okay. How <laughs> the much Browns hard everybody. On that? Well, they weren't going to release Carl Nassib, but then they got a chance to pick somebody else up, so they released him. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I missed that. I, I was like. They the storyline the whole thing was NASA versus the Orchard and they released both of them. And they I, picked I yeah they picked NASA the over Orchard, uh, yeah. Nate Orchard, uh, and but then he was on the fifty three man roster and then when the other teams made their cuts they found a defensive end they liked better, and so okay. then they cut NASA to bring him and I don't even know who that defensive end was. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't seen. But yeah, still, we're all done caring about the Browns now. The best thing is is Greg Marshall asking, Greg Williams, or Greg Williams asking if uh, uh, Kendrick was going to have to go to jail. No, that was Todd Haley that asked. Yeah, was it was it Haley. Todd Haley? Yeah, Haley yeah, was Haley. standing there in the in the doorway. He's like, "So is he going to prison?" <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Are we going to lose Haley, him to jail? Haley at, telling Greg Williams like, "You really have no life." Like he was like, this is all you do. He's like, I see my grandmother or my granddaughter from like time to yeah, time. Says, and you can tell it's like a once a year. To go see my grandmother. Okay, Josh, uh, you went out and saw Marcus Alexander recently. Uh, uh, Josh, Bob, let's hit some recruiting. Sounds good. Uh, you know, I'll just kind of briefly wrap up last week. Saw um, Corey Roberson, uh, Manville defensive end commitment on Thursday. It's always tough with these kids because I check with them like, you good? You healthy? You know, am I going to see you at full strength? Yeah, man, I'm great. You know, they just want me to come out, you know, or anybody with a camera. And I come out and he's limping around. I'm like, son of a. So I didn't see Corey Roberson at his best, but still he's a, he's a guy. Anybody that's seen the tape that we've got up all over the site, he is just such a different type of guy as far as his physical development than a lot of defensive ends OU signed through the years. I mean, really. The only guy that's close to me is Ronnie Perkins, and he's broader than Ronnie was, but he's not as explosive. So there's kind of a give and take there. But lots of life with Corey Roberson. Great motor. Uh, I'll try to go see him again when he is back to full speed so we can get a real evaluation because he's a guy that I feel like could push to four stars. Um, and kind of cl- a clean segue here, a guy that I'm going to make that recommendation for is the other OU commitment I saw last weekend, Marcus Alexander. Uh, the guard from Sunnyvale, uh, Texas, and that kind of uh, east side of Dallas. Um, 
a guy that I didn't really know a lot about. I hadn't seen him in person before. I saw him at our, our Adidas camp back in the spring, but he wasn't really an OU guy at that point. I didn't watch him real close. I loved watching this guy play. I mean, and everybody's going to love all the pancakes we have, again, on the video that's up on the site. Uh, he's just killing people. But the thing I noticed was just how well he was moving around. I mean, he's chasing down big, or excuse me, smaller defenders that are much quicker, more agile, and he's tracking these guys down, burying them. Uh, one of the linebackers for Kemp, the team they were playing, has actually got some FBS offers, uh, Air Force, uh, Navy, I think. So, I mean, uh, he's a quality player. And as soon as Alexander got his hands on the kid, it was over. I mean, he really – he did a very dominant job. It was one of the more – not every time do I go see an offensive lineman and I'm thinking, man, people are going to love this video as much as I love this video, but that was fun to watch. Like He really did just beat the life out of people. And to me, I just with his mixture of athleticism and the way he finishes, I, I think four stars is completely within, within uh, reason for him. We went and saw Mill, uh, Millwood last week against Heritage Hall, Marcus Major. Uh, first play from the scrimmage for him. 52-yard touchdown, so you're thinking you're about to see one of those classic outings. Didn't really pan out that way. Kind of confused by how Millwood was using their play calling with Houston and Major. Didn't really get them involved that much. Uh, 12 carries, 118 yards, and a touchdown in the 30-20 to win. Definitely want to see him see more of him. I, I think Millwood was outthinking itself, trying to be a little too cute. Would like to just see more of straight-up Major. I thought he was good. I mean, you can't really tell a whole lot. He looks good when he's out in the open, but it just wasn't. I don't know. I mean, Millwood it's has the ball. It's been a few minutes since Eddie's crapped on something. Well, Millwood has the ball in the first and 10 from the 10 yard line. And they, they didn't give it to they him. They don't give him the ball once. It's like, okay. It, it, I just, yelled at the coach. I just thought they were trying to Stop be like, the I didn't, game. I didn't come here for this crap. I just they being way too cute. I, was, I think Heritage Hall was okay with it. Not, getting, not giving him <laughs> yeah. the ball. They were, they were completely fine with it. Uh, Josh, it seemed like uh, Marcus Alexander, you know, you said that he was finishing really well. It seemed like he finished a lot on some of the defensive players' faces a lot. <laughs> he what? really did. I, I talked to him after the game, and I was like, you know, kind of what was going on. And he was telling me last year, apparently, it got kind of dirty, kind of nasty between those two teams. They're kind of rivals. And um, he was like, I just came out, and I, was gonna, I, I wasn't going to let it go any other way. Man, I was just going to dominate everybody. And I just I, I loved his attitude. I loved everything about the kid. Um, you know, he's, he's probably 6'2 and a half, 6'3. I mean, if you wanted to find one knock on him, he's not just a tremendously big and long. He's not, you know, Marquise Hayes that's just a mountain of a human being. But I, like I said, guys that can move their feet and finish like that and do some of the things he does – that's that dude's a player all day for me, honestly. And I made the uh, comparison, the story that I wrote. He reminded me a little of Adam Shedd, who is a guy that I think everybody on the board knows. I was just a huge fan of, and just injuries kind of derailed his career. It was a really impressive video, though. I've noticed that a couple uh, of those poor guys, a couple of those kids. I wouldn't be surprised if they just quit football after Friday night. That one Eddie, where he's coming straight at me, I'm behind the goal line. Yeah, he, he just. Just completely that threw I was like, the dude, kid. Just, you need to go. Just put your helmet away. Like, go sit with your mom up in the stands. Like, what, that's bad. What is Sunnyvale? Are they? What class are they? They're they're four A. They just okay. moved up into four A. Kemp is a big three A school. Okay. So they were playing. I think. I mean, you know, I know people are like, oh, Kemp's, you know, whatever. Kemp's like a top ten three A school in Texas. I mean, that that's a team that's gonna. They went to the state semifinals last year. So that's a good football team. Uh, Sunnyvale was just. Uh, they're a little better. They're a little more athletic. And whenever they needed a first down, they just got behind their big boy and he killed everybody. I did. I did find out something disturbing this weekend. Uh Oh, Lincoln Riley admitted that he did not cook that bacon. Oh, really? Yes. I know. I didn't see that. Who, when did he do that? Uh, I believe on his uh, show with Toby. Is that a Caitlin operation? He kind of hinted that they bring someone in to cook the bacon. Ooh, they hire out. Wow. Yeah. He tweeted a picture of his more, hand on know, the bacon. I've been, I've I have been told that he is an excellent cooker of wings. Uh, who said that? I can't tell you. I was with you when he said that then. I was with somebody that said that. Don't, and I won't say. Don't say it. We can talk off air about it. Yes. But I do remember somebody said that. Yeah, I've heard his wing skills are excellent. Someday, I like I'm, a good I'm, wing. I'm holding on to the recipe. I don't think I'm going to give it out this week. 
We'll give it out. If OU wins the national championship, I'll give it out. Give out the bacon recipe. Yeah. And looking at this weekend, again, the noon kick, no favors. Oh, man. He four pissed about four this, official he? visitors, all commits. It, it who's, seems the like, guy, who's the guy that's coming in at 2 a.m.? See, it's either Corey or Stacy. I kind of think it's Stacy Wilkins, and I kind of get the feeling he said catch a flight. Uh-huh. I kind of feel like they're going to drive in because if he left at 2, you'd get here at 9. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know why you would drive from where he is in southwest Arkansas up to Little Rock to catch a flight and then fly over. The only Seems reason like that would just be the only reason I thought it might be possible is because there would be no flight that gets you into OKC on time to get to the game. Like, what if you got there at one at one o'clock? Yeah, you'd be yeah. late. And so, so you have to take the two a.m. flight. There are just, only two a.m. flights though. Just so you get. To OKC, like at four or something. I can't imagine there's any From flights Arkansas, before like, five a.m. Two a.m. flights would have to be like L.A. Yeah, like there's there's not any red eyes. New York, out of yeah, Rock. no, and, <laughs> there's no. Yeah, you're exactly right. Jonathan Perkins doesn't need that. His team is on a buy. He is from California, but his team is on a buy, so he should show up whenever he wants Friday. Kerry, it seems like OU is still very pissed off about. No, they are the morning Absolutely, kickoffs. it's like they get more and more pissed off, and I think. I think it's one of those things where is it because they feel like they're getting disrespected in a way because no, they're I think the big dog? I think it's well for Lincoln, it's strictly because of recruiting. It's right. recruiting for Lincoln. For Joe C, I think it's getting to the point where he feels like it's hurting ticket sales. Yeah, mm. because it's not. It's no longer just about the merchants and all that. Like they're having the the schedule. Of the Big Twelve sucks. I mean, this is like the Seat Geek discussion we had. The the oh. games suck. God, my computer, Lincoln Riley, or no, that's Josh. Josh, you're screwing up the podcast without even typing anything. Um, Technically, I was typing, but you got it. Uh, <laughs> but no, it. I I think it's it's just starting this meltdown with the fan base where they're just getting fatigue uh, because this seems the. And you guys know how this is. Like, hell, if we don't put up a podcast one week or we don't do the scoop one week, we never live it down. Well, if you keep having morning games, you never live it down. I mean, I, I think fans have made it in their minds like. Every non-conference game from here to the last ten years has been at eleven a.m. and add in the Texas game being early every year. Well, I mean, it is it is BS. I mean, to to be playing that early every week, it hurts everybody involved. And you, I know you I know took the money though. You That's took the, the money. Yeah, you could be looking at four of their first six games being at eleven. Well, I mean, is if this OU Texas? Is, here's the thing: is this the one thing? 11. All the stuff that we talk about about why OU would leave the Big 12. This is part of it? No, I'm, I'm saying, does this start to move to the front oh. of the line? Because, boy, SEC games are usually at night. Yeah. I don't know if that would be the reason, but when you look at the bullshit that the Big 12 as a whole put out on the field last week, that's, that's a oh, West reason West Virginia enough. was good. West Virginia was good. The abortion in Austin was Iowa terrible. Iowa didn't play. Texas Tech kind of blew it. Texas well, Tech shouldn't be taken seriously anymore. I'm done with them. They got beat by 20 by Ole Miss. And I might be a little bit bitter because I bet on Tech. But <laughs> but guys, even think about the Texas game. They're 11 a.m. kickoff against Maryland on the road. I mean, that yeah. that's a huge national brand. They should have at least had a 2.30 kick. But no, no, 2.30 kicks are taboo now. Nobody TV networks don't want 2.30 kicks. That's, that's the worst it's TV a kickoff time. No, because no, nobody's just, watching. Oh, you right. either watch earlier or they watch. You watch earlier, you. you watch at night. You. The audience shrinks in middays and yeah. cuz people sense. are going to Home Depot oh, or it makes sense. Bed Bath and Beyond, driving you know? home but, from wherever. Yep. They gave a 2:30 to Washington Auburn though. That was strange. I thought. Well, Which that I thought was on was CBS. The game of the weekend. That was on CBS. That's their only window. That was Oh, you're right. No, ABC. Well, every once in a while. That was ABC. That was ABC. Yeah. Because the they had Bama, Louisville at night, and they had Washington, Auburn lead into it. I wonder if it. ABC just didn't want to go up against Notre Dame, Michigan, which had the highest, I think it was the most watched Notre Dame game in 13 years. It's possible. Why? Like, Notre Dame, Michigan. What's compelling about Notre Dame this year? Nothing. Josh, if they run the tape, I mean, they're going to be in the college football playoff if they win a couple more games. Well, look at all the Catholics on this show. I mean, we're in Oklahoma, and our show is half full of Catholics. I don't know what that means. It means the Catholics are everywhere. That's that is true. Even though most of them are Spanish speaking in this part of the the, the country. See. Si. <laughs> oh my. 
<laughs> and is it Hispanic, racist? Hispanic game is not coming back on Eddie's watch. That was yes. That was yes in Spanish. <laughs> As Speedy Gonzalez. What was that? What was the uh, kid's name at A&M that, a couple years that, ago? That, that cartoon is so racist they don't even oh, show Q? it anymore. I'm talking about Q Gonzalez. Yeah. Jacob Gonzalez. Gutierrez is who you're thinking of. No, that no. transferred to Kansas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Laquiviante Le- Gonzalez. Yeah. I remember seeing him at Cedar. He was a Cedar Hill kid, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep, he was. By the way, uh, how about Caleb on Shashan just showing out and then getting lost for the season for LSU? Is he out? I, I yeah, yes, he's, he's out for the season. Jacob Phillips played well. Oh. He's a good football Don't player. Don't say that with a smile on your face. He's a good football player. He's really good. I mean, we can joke about it now. That's funny. I had to drive. You got to watch the Cubs. That was one of your best, you know, weekends ever. Yeah, it was a pretty good weekend. For me, I think say, Eddie, does driving. that make like does your memory being so connected to that, does that take so much of the burn out of that whole thing? Yeah. I mean because yeah, he got to watch the I Cubs was, the entire way. I mean, when it when you look back on it now, it's pretty funny. I mean pretty obvious. I'm not what there happened. yet. I'm not there yet. I Andy's told really, him in that Andy's interview, really if you decommit, I'm coming back here. Yeah, you never did. He should call your bluff. <laughs> I've had a it's so hard for me to dislike, because, I mean, he's, like, you guys met him. And he's such Bob, a nice kid. Yeah. He was such a great dude. Nice parents he was. He's I mean, really I mean, a good person. Yeah, there was just shady stuff that went on. What the they That was an impressive performance, though. I'm, I'm not completely bought in, though, on LSU. Uh, I don't know how good Miami, Miami is. is. Right, I'm I'm selling Hurricanes Seminoles more than I'm buying what LSU and the Hokies did. Florida State has some players though, man. Florida State just very yeah. meh. Went seven and six last year with yeah, those players. Horrible, yeah, it is terrible. Horrible. Really bad. I I was thinking about this because I, I made that tweet during the game. You know, OU fans should probably appreciate appreciate Bill Beatenbow for what they're watching. From both offensive lines that were just getting overwhelmed. But I think part of it was Florida State's got a lot of really good talent on their defensive line. But from the Florida State side, I could make a really good case that OU second unit would go out there and make a better run than that. It was it I don't was, think that's crazy. It I mean, Virginia Tech just methodically whipped them. I like when Virginia Tech's good. I think that's good. It's kind of well, hard guys, to dislike Virginia Tech. I was skeptical Tech of Beamer. Fuente. He's really good. He really is. He's really, really good. You know what? Uh, you know what should scare OU fans? Uh, Beamer is, going is, is back Texas, to Virginia is, Tech. No, well, never. I gave him a lifetime contract last Saturday. He's not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> Will they honor that pizza shuttle? Uh, I need to talk to uh, James, Mister Gagley. Gagley to you guys. <laughs> Mr. Gagley. Uh, would Texas be smart enough to go after Justin Fuente? Ooh, probably not, because he Ooh. probably wouldn't play their game. But I mean, the clock is it, the clock is Daryl offic- Royal part two. The clock is officially ticking on Tom Herman, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I agree. Do you guys? The articles coming out of when, Austin and Dallas too much, are there's amazing. There's too. I mean, Texas is that one place where there's just too much damn money. The Mike, to not make a change if this shit show continues. The Mike Finger article this past weekend it was, was brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. Bold I mean, it pretty is, good too. It is. I mean, it's, douchebag Mac Engel had a pretty good article as well. The guy that said Baker was going to be a failure. Yeah, right? but he called him Tommy Boy the entire time. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, but I mean, this whole this whole thing about the fans just don't know. You can't. You're. You're. That's part one of losing your job when you lose the fans, and you make the fans out to be. Like they what the, what they feel and think doesn't matter. That is step one to losing your job. They've been waiting for this moment too. Just Guys, did you think turn. at times Bob would get close to that line? Yes. But at that point, he had skins on the wall. Like yes. he'd won a national yeah. title. He won the he'd nas- done all that. When you win the national title in your second year, though, that gives you like a sure. ten year grace period. Then sure. it did. No, no, no. It like he could do it and get away with it. I'm just saying. I think at times Bob walked that same line. The thing is. Bob did that at a time when it actually gave you, you know, tenure. I don't think that exists anymore. I think you can, if you win a national championship in college, I think five years is the max that you get if you don't win another. But the thing was, Bob kept get, winding up in the national championship picture. That's what kept him in it more than just winning it. Bob never lost 04, 04, to Maryland twice. 03, 04, 08, and then he got back to the college football playoff. 
Maryland doesn't have another ranked win since 2011. Yeah, I mean, TCU... The loss this year is more like one of Bob's the most embarrassing... The, the loss at UCLA might have been Bob's most embarrassing loss. 41-24, something like that. Other than some of those Bedlam games that just got out of hand. Yeah, and, you know, that's going to happen. I mean, in-state rival that you beat literally the every other year. The K-State loss in the Big 12 title game when they still played for the national title, that was a bad loss. But... They, Texas in 05 was a really bad loss. Shit. But they were Texas, national champs. Texas Yeah, I was say, but you lost bad. the best team in the country. Yeah, are you talking bad loss like in the score discrepancy or just the way well, you I'm thinking, play? I think it all just bad okay. losses, mainly scores. But, yeah, I mean, like, the what is the worst loss Bob ever saw? I mean, USC. Clemson? It's got to be USC. No, no, no. I'm saying with opponent, like, USC, at least that was in the national championship game. I, but it was. Baylor it was 2014 at home. Yeah, 48-14. Oh, that's a low point. That's a good one, Bob. The yeah, though, although the Clemson, the, the Clemson uh, Russell Athletic Bowl. The fighting Cole Stouts. That's the first time I think you could ever say, well, that and the Baylor game, that's the only two times I could ever point where I say that team quit. They were losing it. Nope. As, a, as a program, That was the turning it. point. Yeah. I mean, and that's then, when all the changes happened. And then the last three years happened. It's interesting. Bob admitted that he thought about stepping down after yeah, that. that. That was a really good article in that Trammell. Was, that was a nice piece. All right. Uh, so anything, anything we needed to catch up on? I, I threw the bacon out there, but this weekend recruiting anything that popped up, or I know there was some talk about maybe it could make it happen here or there. Just think, Jacoby Jones is going to wait a little bit longer. I mean, it's clear he had a great time. He told me his favorite part was going golfing with hmm. Mike and Lincoln. And I mean, they're doing ev- they're doing everything right in that regard. So there's nothing to worry about just yet. Peyton Powell maybe a little skittish here. He doesn't show up. He gets hurt Friday night, so he doesn't make the visit. And then you come uh, when you add that to him visiting Texas here in a couple weeks. Does that change anything to his September 26th decision date? He hasn't rescheduled with OU just yet. He's going to, but there's no official date locked down. You're going to talk to Bob. You're going to talk to Lincoln tonight. Um, you are a representative. Um, I'm going to have you ask him kind of like there's early recruiting now, but is there also another period that is season recruiting where some schools may underperform and, you know, you have kids that might be second guessing their decision? Because, I mean, that's that's got to be a part of this. So, I mean, let's not pretend like. Coaches don't do that. Oh, guys, there, there was a report somewhere, and I don't even know where it came from, but we have, I've had a lot of people ask me about it. Josh, I hear there's this this guy committed elsewhere that's contacted OU. The mistake people are making is assuming that's one kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of them. Like, it's, it's not just one dude that's doing that. There are lots of kids committed elsewhere that are still in contact with OU and Alabama and all these other schools that they would love to go play for. Like, if you don't think the entire SEC and OU and Texas are watching Ohio that Clemson, State. Ohio yeah. State are watching that Clemson Texas A and M college game, station, hoping is, for a yes. blowout and just a you know a a mess, everybody is hoping for that. They're hoping that every recruiter that A and M really wants is at that damn game. <laughs> yeah, watch them get massacred. They're like, no, no, go. You're going to love College Station. It's beautiful this time of year. Hot as hell. There's a bunch of crazy people running around. A bunch of fat There's, chicks uh, and overalls. Yeah, it's going to come off like you're in a military, you know, a um, military state a little bit. It's going to be great. You'll love it. Go. It's like North Korea, but with white people. Yeah, and they'll be super happy after they lose. It's going to be It's going to be a wonderful time. Speaking of, I may be watching that game with some A&M fans, so... One of them listens to this podcast, so it could get awkward. I'm really, I'm looking mm. forward to that. Interesting. I'll pray for you. Yeah. You're a cult. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're not a football program. You're a cult. <laughs> David Crush had nothing on Jimbo Fisher. So are you saying Jimbo Fisher's somebody's gonna ATF is gonna attack him? Maybe somebody's got to stop this madness, huh, Eddie? Somebody does. All right, uh, I think that does it. It's a long. This is our longest podcast in a long time. This is what happens when the season gets going. We have lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, but the Lexus Post Game Show, the Eskridge Lexus Post Game Show, uh, will return this weekend. My God, sometimes iTunes and Google are going to get us put through. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but apparently in Cupertino and where's Google? 
Somebody, mm. Nobody knows where Google is. The Valley. The headquarters. <laughs> Somewhere in the Valley. Somewhere in the Bay Area. Anyway, get to work, jackasses. Labor Day is one day. It's not the whole week. And we didn't even observe it at Soonerscoop.com. We never do. Norman High School had Friday, Monday, Tuesday off. I'm really Back in my day. that you know about the high school schedules. Because Brittany has to watch those uh, boys that are in the Norman school district. You're not making it any better. Eject, eject, eject. <laughs> she had to work. Complicated your wife. <laughs> she had to work. She had to babysit. Eject. It, well, we just, thought we had a free I, day. For people that don't know that your wife is a professional caregiver, I don't know caregiver's the right word, but a professional nanny or whatever, like that just sounded really weird. I was going to say, she watches those boys. She watches high school boys. No, elementary, but they're in the Norman. <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> Brittany's going to be like, I don't like you going on that podcast. You're making me look bad. Terrible impersonation. Well, I don't want to get too close to home. You know, we got to make her a little bit of a caricature. All right, uh, Eddie, thank you for being awful today, as usual. Um, uh, I don't know what that means, Bob. Sling thank blade. You. That's what I heard. Um, there we go. I've never heard Eddie do that before. We're good. Uh, Josh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to uh, the Choctaw Casino, uh, who makes this all possible uh, with their uh, title sponsorship of the Unofficial 40. Uh, thanks to Coop Works. Go grab you some beers. Thanks to SeatGeek. Remember, twenty per, or $20 off your first purchase. Go download the app. Use the promo code SCOOP. Get you some great tickets this weekend uh, to OU Games and help our podcast. Because the more you sign up for that stuff, uh, the better it looks for us uh, and the better it will be for us in the long run. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, Soonerscoop.com. Go sign up. Swipe up. Sign up. Whatever you want to do. Uh, great community. Uh, great information. Bob, Eddie, Josh, they're all killing it right now. Uh, so thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time uh, back again on the Unofficial 40s podcast. Podcasts from Soonerscoop.com.